Hi, my name is EJ Massa. If you've been following me recently, you know I've been making a hobby of playing on, collecting, and repairing old CRT televisions and monitors. Well, since I have so many, and my old consoles are connected to some of the more bigger high-quality ones like my Sony PVM, this little 13-inch CRT hasn't gotten much love. This guy's special because it's been modded to include an RGB SCART input for higher-quality retro gaming. It's always on my desk here, and I thought it would be nice if it was a one-stop shop for retro gaming gaming, and watching old movies. The obvious suggestion would be some sort of Mr. FPGA system for accurate hardware emulation. You can even get a VGA Descartes cable. But in my search for a solution, I came across this, the RGB Pi SCART cable, which can be used with a Raspberry Pi system. And I thought this would be perfect. Raspberry Pis are plentiful nowadays, so I thought I'd give it a try. When it came in, I thought the quality of the cable seems sound. It's short to lessen the potential for interference. You have a handsome logo on the SCART connector, and on the other side is the connector that hooks up to the pinouts in the Raspberry Pi 4. Speaking of Pi, I got this random Raspberry Pi kit from Amazon, which comes with a ton of relevant goodies along with the Raspberry Pi I'll be using. To narrow it down, these are the necessary components for this project. You have heat sinks, which apply to the chips. Of course, you have the Raspberry Pi 4 itself. This is the eight gigabyte RAM model. You have this clear case that has a window for us to connect our SCART cable. You have this USB power supply, which has a handy switch for quick powering on and off. And finally, you have a 64 gigabyte Samsung SD card, which will house our operating system. Samsung is a reputable brand. In fact, the same brand as this old CRT, so I'm assuming the memory card will work even better knowing it's working with its grandpa. As a demonstration, you connect the SCART cable to these pins like so. First things first, I put the heat sinks on, snapped on the clear case, which as you can see has that convenient cutout where we'll slide in our SCART cable, plugged in the USB-C power supply, and I like that the switch is pretty close to the unit itself. Now the companion to this cable is the RGB Pi software, which is a custom RetroArch build stripped down and optimized for 240p output on a CRT. You'll find the most recent build of this operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4 on the RGB Pi website, and you can basically name your price for the operating system, so feel free to throw them a few bucks for their hard work. And I should note that the RGB Pi team is working on a version for the Raspberry Pi 5, and the current cable should be compatible with the new Raspberry Pi 5. All right, time to flash the operating system to the SD card. I booted up Elena Etcher, clicked on Flash from File, selected the RGB Pi image I downloaded, selected the Samsung SD card that's in my card reader, and then clicked flash. After a few minutes, the flash is complete and the SD card is ready to be loaded into the card slot at the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Plug the SCART cable into my television and with a flick of the switch, we'll see if this works. Ah, there's an RGB Pi logo. It gives me a message about the storage partition expanding, and once complete, the system will reboot. When it finally loads up, you get this awesome retro game style menu, where you'll first select your language, you'll configure your joypad, I'm using this cheap iBuffalo USB gamepad I got 10 years ago, and you'll see that we have no games and the Kodi Media Center. So I guess we have to add some games. To do that, we need to connect to the network. I pressed start to get to the menu and selected network, selected configure Wi-Fi, searched for local Wi-Fi networks, changed my country to US and selected my router and inputted my password. Once connected, it'll give you an IP address. Back on my computer, I like to use a program like FileZilla to connect to the Pi. You'll type in the IP address, the username, which is Pi, and the password, which is RGB Pi, and the port is 22. And there you go, you're connected. I clicked on SD because that's where I'll store my games, clicked on ROMs, and to start, I'll test by adding Mega Man 2 to the NES folder and Super Metroid to the SNES folder. You may be asking, EJ Massa, where do you get these ROMs that you're talking about? You know where to get them. Stop lying, you filthy, filthy beast. And when you go back to the option menu, you'll scroll down to the scan games option and select it. I selected USA info because I'm in the US. 
So it scans and when I go back out to the systems menu, I have NES and SNES folders to select. All right, let's test this out. I'll select NES and Mega Man 2, and then you get this screen with some actions you can do, and then boom, I'm playing some Mega Man. I mean, this looks just about as good as playing on my real system with a real game cart. And I'm not really noticing any lag, at least in my casual play. I'd say it looks and plays as well as the real hardware, especially these 2D systems. Super Metroid plays pretty much how I remember it playing. It looks absolutely fantastic on this little screen. If you press start and select at the same time, you bring up the emulation menu, where you can save and load save states. You can tweak some video settings to your liking. For example, you can select your preferred palette for the NES, like the Virtual Console palette. I prefer the Sony CXA 2025AS palette. Looks good to me. And then you just go to the core settings and save what you changed. I really didn't tweak much for the emulators because I felt the defaults mostly worked well. One of the main draws for me for setting this up was to play some arcade games on a CRT. And man, they look absolutely stunning. Finally, I can play the Simpsons Arcade the way I remember playing it at Interskate 91 with the phosphor glow of a CRT. Quickly, I'll go over a few options in the menu of interest to me. I won't cover all these options, just a sample. Under display and then adjustment, you can use this to calibrate your screen with a service menu of your CRT. You can also rotate the screen in case you want to use this for vertical shooters. Under sound, you can have the Pi output sound out of the audio jack. This is great if you want to use headphones or an external sound system. One thing I want to point out in the controls menu is this operating system supports GunCon 2s. So if you want to play your favorite arcade shooters with a setup, it's super easy. Under the online option, you can set up retro achievements or even net play. Under storage, not only can you store games on the SD card, but you can also utilize the USB ports or NFS. In the emulation menu, you can customize the input lag reduction. I found standard to be more than adequate, so I haven't messed with it. You can either turn it off or do extreme, which is compatible with a few cores and adds even more auto frame delay. Then finally, there's kiosk mode, which might be good if you have kids. You basically set a password and then it locks out the menu settings until you input the password again. See, if I try to change the settings, it just says kiosk mode and stops me. I'm having a blast with this thing. Rondo of Blood looks and sounds amazing. Finally, I'm playing it on a CRT for the first time. You can play Game Boy Advance games on here and select between full screen and standard. Full screen I found looks too weird and flickery, and standard has severe black bars all around the image, but you know, it doesn't look half bad. I can see myself playing a lot of GBA games like this. The limit I would probably play on this device personally is the original PlayStation, which to my eyes looks very close to the original hardware. Even 3D games look exactly right, and if you were to quiz me, if this was emulated or original hardware, I would have a tough time answering in a double blind study. N64, on the other hand, it looks emulated to me. It's missing that sort of blurry, shitty charm that you'd get with original hardware. It's not really what I'm looking for when I'm playing on a CRT. Plus, the compatibility isn't 100% there on the Pi 4. Same goes for the Dreamcast. A lot of games technically work on it, but it feels emulated and lacks a certain je ne sais quoi. So for me, I'm gonna use this mostly for 8-bit, 16-bit, and PlayStation gaming. Another main reason I'm setting this up is for the Kodi Media Player, which will allow me to play all my favorite 4-3 aspect ratio content. As a note, you may need a mouse to do the initial setup for your gamepad controls. First time I selected Kodi Media Player, I couldn't do anything until I plugged in a mouse and set up a controller specifically for the media player. Your controller settings from the emulation side don't port over automatically. You also have to point the video player to the folder you have your videos in. I have mine in the Kodi folder on the SD card. Now I have the complete 1997 series of Berserk, and everybody knows anime waifus belong on a CRT. This is just science. So my new Raspberry Pi will allow me to enjoy this anime waifu. How about this anime waifu? Or how about this anime waifu? Wait, that's not an anime waifu. That's YouTuber Jason Graves. But that's okay. 
His famous JRPG YouTube series is delivered in beautiful 4.3, perfect for CRT televisions. And you know what? Watching video game YouTuber B-roll on a CRT just seems right and just. And how about movies? I picked up these lovely full-screen versions of these beloved classics. All cinephiles know that the cropped 4.3 pan scan versions of movies are the most desired way to watch all films. Get real. And Star Wars fans, they all agree that the full-screen version of the 2004 DVD release is the definitive version of Star Wars. Harm me despecialized version? Ew. Hashtag Greedo shoots slightly first. Look, my boomer dad always said, Son, if the movie isn't filling up the whole screen, it's not a real movie. And who am I to argue with my boomer dad? Oh, holy shit, did they squish the frame so all these guys could fit on screen? I just looked it up. They totally did. That's awesome. I love full screen versions. Well, there you have it, folks. I have a Raspberry Pi filled to the brim with games, DVD full screen rips, and Jason Graves YouTube videos all connected to a beautiful 13 inch CRT television. It used to be the most neglected TV in this house, but now I think I play it the most. Maybe I should throw all of my EverDrives into the river. If you have a CRT with a SCART input, I highly recommend the RGB Pi, the SCART cable, and the operating system. I think it works out great with very few tweaks. And I can't wait to see what they do with the Raspberry Pi 5. Until next time, bye!